In this video I'll show you how I made this fake chat simulator for live streams. Many top streamers on YouTube and Twitch have a chat scroller. Viewers love to interact with their idols online and maybe send donations too. But what if you're like me and you don't have any fans? Don't worry, with a little C sharp coding and simple front end design you too can have a chat scroller for your own live streams. My code is actually very simple, but I think my fake bot looks really authentic compared to these chats on popular streamers channels. Who is having the more intelligent discussion? My bots or the viewers of these popular Twitch live streams? Let me know in the comments below. If you want my source code I've uploaded it to GitHub. There's a link to the repo in the description below. All you need to run it is the free version of Microsoft Visual Studio. Later in the video I'll show you how to integrate it into the popular OBS streaming software. I've done this for the video you're watching right now. First I'll briefly run through the requirements for our chat simulator. As you can see most streamers chat windows are basically the same. Viewers type in text and it appears next to their username slash handle. The comments need to scroll upwards as more comments appear. The comments should also not scroll past so fast that we can't read them. Finally we need to ensure we're using fonts large enough to read on a variety of screen types and sizes. You'll notice that emojis are quite common, so we'll want to include those. Gotta have emojis! Also notice most users comments are quite short. I guess people are using their mobiles to interact with streams, plus they might not necessarily be able to write much English. Hence the numerous comments that consist mainly or solely of emojis. Now I'll run through the source code, including how to customise it for your own requirements. If you have any ideas or suggestions for how to enhance it, then drop a comment below or feel free to fork out a branch on GitHub. One thing I'd like to add is the appearance of viewers sending in donations. That would be pretty neat, huh? So the chat scroller is basically a simple client server application. The client part of it is just a single web page which uses view.js to communicate with the backend controller. So we don't use a layout or master page here. If you want to change the design of the site, there's a site.css file here in the CSS folder. So this is a really simple CSS file. The thing to bear in mind is that the font has to be quite big and I've also given it a bold font weight. And the background colour is dark blue. I tend to find that streaming really needs uh, darker colours better because many people watch streams on their TV like I do. So let's go back to the index page. If you've not used Vue.js, it's a good a lightweight alternative if you just want some interactive JavaScript on the front end. So you just need to download it and install Vue.min.js. I put them in the JS folder here. It also needs something called Axios. So there's an Axios.min here. This is the little library that Vue uses to communicate with the backend server. We instantiate the view, call it random chat app. It does the search. I've put in these keywords here. First of all, there's a topic area. I'll explain more about that later. And also there's a comma separated list of keywords. These are the keywords that I want the chat people to mention. So the bots will talk about many subjects, but they will try and put these into the conversation. So depending on what your niche is and what your live stream is about, you could actually change these to a whole load of other things. A timeout here. This is the interval between the new chat updates in the window. So I tried to make it a bit random. You can play around with the timing, but I wanted to get the timing kind of random so it's not evenly updating. So it basically sets a timeout for a random time interval. This interval here. So it randomly calls this get search results here. This goes to the API, makes a post, and it sends in the topics that we want. So there's the main topic and a list of other subtopics. So it goes to slash API slash random chat response, and the data it comes back, it just puts into the window. Our Windows scroll to is very useful. This was actually the most difficult thing, I'm not amazingly good at JavaScript, but this is how you scroll the window when something gets to the bottom. So you'll notice on my chat window here, ah, uh, it's here isn't it? On my chat window, the things scroll down and when you get to the bottom, then it will scroll up. So the newest one will keep going up the screen. 
So let's have a look at this API get random chat response. I should just mention the home controller. This is basically just empty. It returns the view. So nothing is required here. And the API controller just has one method. It's a get random chat response. So I should probably not call that foo. Uh, that's really bad practice. So sometimes I have problems getting things from forms being posted from like Axios and Vue.js and getting them out again. So I think I played around with this. So basically it gets the value of mode and also topics. Then it will return a chat view model. And let's have a look at the view model. So basically it returns a username, a response, which is whatever they've typed in and also a timestamp. I don't think I actually use a timestamp, but you might find a timestamp is kind of useful. So this class is returned as a JSON object using the newtonsoft.json nuget package. This is really useful and you probably used it if you've done any .NET at all. This means that the properties are accessible in the front end. So then we can just use the properties. We use username here, which is put into yellow. I should probably put that in a style sheet, really. And also the response goes here, which is white. Again, that should also be in the style sheet, really. So this was how the data is returned. Now let's have a look at how the data is actually generated. So the first thing we want is a username and there is a random data class. Get random name will return a random username. Let's have a look at how I did that. R and D next will generate a number between zero and 15. And then we use a switch statement and depending on that, we return a name. And the thing called faker here is actually called faker.net. Again, this is another NuGet package. Let's find the packages. Okay, so this is called faker.net. This is immensely valuable if you want to generate some random data. I'll just point out that sometimes it can be a little difficult to get this to actually work. Um, in Visual Studio, sometimes you have to build the project and then rebuild it because the first time you run, I think it puts all of the files into the bin folder. So if it doesn't work, then build, clean solution, and then build it again and it should work. Just check that the files have been put into the binary folder. So if you probably noticed on live streams, people don't always put their first name, last name. They put all kinds of random handles and avatars and things. So this varies the usernames it actually returns. So I use faker.name, which returns random people's names. There's first name, middle name, and last name. Um, it will also do first name. Let's see what's internet. I think it will return some random internet usernames as well. Occasionally I set it so that it will return a random number. I've also found that the currency names can be quite good usernames, so it returns some of those. And what's get naming word? I've also done this one. Okay, so naming words, I've put in a few words that occasionally I think they should return them. Feel free to change this one. Faker can return all kinds of other things as well. You might find useful for other scenarios. For example, a US passport number and also countries. So sometimes people use their country names. So feel free to change this and extend it. So that is the random names. Let's have a look at the random responses. So there are three arguments for get random response. We send in the main topic, the list of other topics we want people to talk about, and also the username that they're using. And let's have a look. So this is quite a long function, but it generates quite a bit of data. One thing I do is every time the application uses a name, then it adds that to a array. Is that an array? Is that actually a list? Okay, so it adds existing usernames to a list. This is really useful because it allows the bots to talk about other bots. So you can get some kind of conversation going. I was trying to change the mood. This is the main keyword. So if it's angry, then we generate an angry response. And I've been doing a lot of hardware related videos lately. So I put in something for hardware. So let's have 
a look, we'll just peek it this time. Okay, so this generates random insults and things, so you can basically put in whatever you want. I do a lot of replacing, so if it finds something like this, P percent sign, then it will put in a random programming language. If you do this, then you can generate a quite a large number of different phrases all the time. Basically, by doing substitutions, you can vastly increase the number of phrases it returns. And there are routines in there to generate random emoji strings. Emojis, as you've seen in the chat windows I've displayed earlier, are very common in chats. I've linked to the emoji place in the description below, but this is actually how you write emojis. Uh, there's some kind of code. I think it's Unicode. So it's quite cryptic, but there's a whole list of emojis there. I can't remember which one is the pizza. Again, this code is on the GitHub, so you can download it. It should be quite easy to get it running, and then you can customize it to your own requirements. And you can see that my chat people talk about countries quite a bit, so again, this is using Faker, and again, this is the routine that returns long lists of emojis. So if you want to use this in OBS Studio, you actually have to run the application. Once the application is running, just copy and paste the URL and put it into the OBS window. Okay, I'm now in OBS Studio and this is the setup of one of my screens. So if you want to add a chat scroller here, you right click in sources and add and then browser. So I think my screen recorder might not have recorded that. So it's just a click here, sources and then add a browser. So when the window appears, you just add the URL of the Visual Studio project that's running. I'll mention that you have to make sure that the Visual Studio application is actually running and the browser window is open, otherwise the chat won't appear. So the chat window is here and you can resize it to fit with your other windows. I don't know if you can make it smaller. No, it just kind of resizes proportionally, so it is a bit of a hassle moving it. So the good thing about that is that I've noticed that the engagement levels increase on any video that I do this. I think that people are reading the comments so they're not clicking out of the video and going to watch somebody else's video. If you do have any suggestions for how I can improve this, then leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do. If I do change it, I'll upload the latest version to GitHub. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.